Let's work on finding the domain and range from a function in uh, two representations, from equations and from graphs. So let's start off with equations. And we're going to look at the three families that we look at, the linear, the quadratic, and the exponential. Now for the domain of a function in equation format, you just kind of have to think about what x values you can and can't use inside the function. And uh, for example, y equals 4x plus 5, this is one that's linear, and I have to think, okay, is there a value of x in the real numbers that I cannot multiply by 4 and I cannot add 5 to? And there's not. So this thing's domain is actually all real numbers because I can plug in whatever I want for x and I'm going to get some output value. Now for the range, I'm actually going to use my graphing calculator as a little helpful tool to figure out what the range of that function is. So I'm looking for that y values that are, what's happening with the y in essence. And so if I go to the graph, um, it looks like I can get all those y values. And if I zoom out, it looks like I can still get all those y values. And if I zoom out again, it looks like I can still get all those y values. So it turns out that the range of this function also happens to be all real numbers. And that's true for all linear functions. If I just give you the definition of this function in equation format, and I ask you to find domain and range, they're just all reals. True for linear functions. Now, if I tell you ahead of time that I'm going to limit the domain and you can only have like positive x's, then of course your range is going to change in, in a correspondence to that limiting. But if I just give you some linear function, um, then it's domain and range are all reals. So then let's look at the equation y equals x squared minus 4. Now, the quadratics are more interesting because I know that those graphs are these things called parabolas, the U-shaped graphs, either like smiley face U's or upside down U's. Um, so I have x squared and I'm going to subtract off 4. And first thing, I'm going to think about the domain. And I think, is there a number in the real number line that I can't square and, and subtract 4 from? And there's not. So my domain is going to be all reals. And that's true for all quadratics. I can use whatever I want for x. But then let's look at the range. Now I know it's a parabola. And so I know there's a part of the graph I can't have. Like, I can't have any numbers below this minimum point of my parabola. Now, I also know my parabola goes on forever upwards, but there's a minimum value that I can't have in this parabola. Uh, so, like, anything below here I'm not going to get from my equation because of the nature of squaring and getting rid of the sign that would get rid of all those values down there. So if I look at the table, oh, that's way too far. So I'm getting like huge numbers, huge numbers. I'm looking for the minimum value. I'm scrolling down, I'm scrolling down. And oh, oh, here it is. At zero, I seem to get a negative four, and that seems to be the smallest value. And so therefore, my range is every single y value that is negative four or greater. And how do I write numbers that are y's that are greater than or bigger than uh, negative four? Well, it's writing y is greater than or equal to negative four. So let's think about what's true for all quadratics. Well, this is definitely true for all quadratics. Okay, if I just give you a quadratic um, equation, uh, quadratic functions, um, then the domain's going to be all real. Now, if, once again, ahead of time, if I told you you can only have positive or negative, you know, values, then that of course changes all of this. But I can't say that the range of every quadratic is greater than or equal to negative four. There are actually two cases. I'm going to get my happy face parabolas, which have some minimum value. And I have the frowny face parabolas, which have some maximum value. And so this one was happy face and had a minimum. And notice that the y value was greater than or equal to the minimum. So that's going to be the range for any quadratic that has the minimum or is happy face. And then I look at the frowny face, the maximum. Well, it's not going to be greater than or equal to, actually. It's going to be less than or equal to. So the y values are less than or equal to the maximum value for all of the frowny face parabolas. Um, so that's how I find the range for a quadratic. Now I need to be able to find them for exponentials. So let's look at y equals 2 to the x plus 3. And you're going to have to, you know, trust me on, on this one. Uh, the domain of all of the exponential functions happens to be all reals. I know you guys uh, don't have never had to find, a, you know, a, an exponent that's like a fraction or a decimal or whatever. Um, but believe me, they exist. If you don't, if you don't, go, you know, when you come to class, get your calculator, take two, raise it to some crazy decimal power, raise it to pi or whatever, and you're, um, sorry, you're going to get um, 
any real number works. So just trust me, the domain of the exponential functions are uh, all real. Uh, now let's look at the range. Now I'm going to look at the graph again to find the range. Okay, so I'm going to go back to y equals, change my equation to 2 to the x power, and uh, add on a 3. Okay, and I'm going to look at the, the graph. Whoops, the graph. And remember the exponentials have kind of like a flat spot and like that really super steep spot. And that flat spot uh, approaches something called an asymptote, which is an imaginary line on the graph that, that the actual graph will get really, really close to but never cross over. And that asymptote is the key. i got to know where that is. And I can't really tell from the graph because it looks like a horizontal line. So let's go to the table. And so what I'm looking for is there a y value that my x values get really, 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 really close to but never cross over. And if I just scroll up for a bit, it's going to pop up like instantly. Oh, look, there it is. That's the y value that my graph gets really, really close to but doesn't cross over. But it's not or equal to 3. You have to be careful because this is a limited size on my uh, screen. And so my calculator rounds. But if I scooch over to the y value and highlight it, notice it's not 3. It's really close to 3, but it's not 3. So if I scroll up a whole bunch to maybe 30 something and I scooch over, see that number is like super close to 3, but it's not 3. So that tells me that my range is going to be, uh, the lower limit on my range is 3. So it's going to be y is strictly greater than 3 because it can't equal 3. And that's what is special about the exponential. And that's the difference between the exponential and the quadratic. The quadratic, it can have its endpoint, um, like the minimum or maximum is part of, is included in the range, where it's not for an exponential. And it goes to the function. I can get x squared to be a 0 to make that a negative 4. I can't make 2 to the x a 0 to get that to be a 3. No matter what value of x I use, this thing is never going to be 0. So that's why it's strictly greater than 3. And once again, I have to look at two special cases when looking at the range for the exponentials. I have two types of exponentials that we look at in Algebra 1. I have the ones that look like this, where this is that asymptote. And I have the ones where the asymptote is above and the graph is like flipped over um, through the x-axis. So this one, um, we're going to call this the asymptote value. And so these have ranges that are y or greater than the asymptote. And yes, there's a p in the, in the word asymptote. Um, and then this one is going to be y is less than the asymptote. Remember, the exponentials are exclusive because no matter what you do, you can never get that thing to actually be 0. You can get it really, really close, but never actually 0. And for the quadratics, it actually is included because you totally can make x squared 0. So now, let's look at how to find um, domains and ranges from graphs. And not the kind of infinite graphs that we see here that have the arrows that make them go on forever. We're going to look at pieces of graphs because, well, we like to sometimes look at just the piece of a graph. So let's look at this first one. Okay, I actually have three on here, but let's look at this first one. So notice I have not a whole line, but the piece of a line or a line segment. And I can say that this line segment here represents some function. And I can ask you to find the domain and range of this function. And it's really not that bad. All you have to do is remember that domain are all the x values and range are all the y values. And you look at your scale and you figure out what all the x values can be and what all the y values can be. So over here, it looks like the x values start at 1. And the highest x value happens to be a 6. So my domain are all the numbers between 1 and 6. Then I have to think about what these little dots mean. And I'm going to tell you right now, these filled in dots are inclusive endpoints. That means these dots, their values are included. Okay. So here's how I write the domain. And I'm going to write it as something called a combined inequality. Because what I have here are x values that are greater than or equal to 1 and at the same time x values that are less than or equal to 6. But I don't want to write those two inequalities. So the way I do that is I write, the way I combine them is I write the lowest number first and then the highest number and then I put the x in between and I have to write the correct symbols. Since these endpoints are included, I have to say less than or equal to and less than or equal to. And what I'm saying is that the x values are in between 1 and 6 and include 1 and 6. So that's the domain of this piece. Okay, and so if I look at the range, I do the same thing, but I look along the y-axis. So if I scooch over here, my scale every 2 is counting by 10, which means this is a 5. And I scooch over here, and I get 35. So my range goes between 5 and 35. And I'm not going to write an x for range. I'm going to write a y, because remember, it's the y values for the range. And I look and see, 
are they included or not? And they are. So this is less than or equal to and less than or equal to. Now let's contrast that with this one, that I have the open dots. So if a filled in dot has the or equal to, that means these open dots are exclusive endpoints. That means they do not contain the endpoints and are gonna be the strictly less than uh, variety. So once again, I'm gonna look, see what my x values are. The lowest x value is a one. The highest x value seems to be an eight. I'm gonna put a one and an eight for my domain my x in between, and this time, since the endpoints are not included, I'm gonna say strictly, strictly less than, all right? Do the same thing with my range. Now remember, the range are the y values. So I look at the lowest y value, which happens to be an eight, and the highest y value, which is this number here, and so my, my scale's counting by two, so that has to be a 14, right? So my low value is eight, my high value is 14, and those two are not included, so they're strictly less than. All right, now let's fancy this up a bit and look at this graph. Oh no, I have both endpoints, and oh wait, my, my, it's not a straight line, it actually comes outside of the line, it comes outside of the line, so I have to figure out how to do this one. So let's do the domain first, because I look along the x, and I see over here at negative three, that seems to be my lowest value. And then over here at apparently five is my highest value. So my domain is gonna go from negative three to five with an X in between. And then I have to decide, are these endpoints included or excluded? So this one is filled in, so it's inclusive. So that means, or equal to. This one is exclusive, so it means strictly less than. So that's my domain. Now let's do the range. So I have to look along the Y and look at the very lowest value along the Y, which is a six. And then I go up and I don't stop there because that's not the highest Y value. The highest Y value is actually up here and I need to figure out what that number is. So these seem to be counting by three. So three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, yes, 21, 24, and 27. So that highest Y value is a 27. I gotta go to the highest Y value. So it's from six to 27 and I need to think inclusive, exclusive. So is it included or not? And the six is totally included. So I'm gonna put a less than or equal to. And at the 27, that's included. There's actually a point there. So I can say less than or equal to. And that's how I find my range. Now, if you swap these numbers and you say high to low, then of course the alligator mouse, the directions have to go the opposite way. But if you're consistent and say low, high, then all you have to do is put the X or Y in between and figure out what the endpoints are, whether they are exclusive, strictly, or inclusive, uh, less than or equal to, or greater than or, or less than or equal to. All right. So that's how you find uh, domain and range from graphs and equations.